Let's do some endless topics to know. Practice questions, 25 questions on key topics you should know for your endless. You ready? Let's get to it. First question, delegation question. Very, very important. You need to be comfortable with those questions. You're going to see a lot of delegation and prioritization question. What is the issue? Which RN delegation to the UAP is appropriate in the high clinic? We are in the high clinic. So you have to know what they can do and what they cannot do. Like I always say, you have to have a strategy. RN eat everything. We do evaluation, assessment, and teaching. The U, um, the LPN, that's MMR most, right? All it does is monitor whatever the RN has found, give most medication, reinforce the teaching, monitor everything, do stomach care, some special tests, and two feet. The UAP, they just do things that does not require thinking. They're very smart, but for your test, think like that. They can report things they see, but they cannot make an assessment. They can do ADRs. I don't like listing those information, but I just say things that does not require a lot of thinking. That's all. If you tell them to go take yeah, measure urine output, they will measure it. It does not require anything. They look at the urine and they write it down. So guess what? Use that strategy. Teaching on eye drop usage. Well, the word teaching make this answer wrong. Look for high irritation. Look, assessment in a client with high trauma. It's an assessment. I'm looking for it, right? Perform snelling chart test on the client. They just perform it. It's like doing a virus on a patient. We do vitals, they measure urine output. This is a test they do on patients all the time. Most of this, when you go to the eye clinic, it's a UAP doing it. They're just checking your vitals. Snelling chart test is a vitals of your eye. Think like that. It's a vitals they're doing for your eye to uh, figure out what is going on. They don't interpret the results. As soon as it's done, they give it to the doctor. So this is appropriate. Reinforcement, no. We can reinforce that teaching side effect of a drug. Simple, straightforward delegation strategy. Consider the answer choice come so easily without not thinking too fast. First question down. Number two, which order the natural question? Something is wrong. You look at a combination and you said, I like pharmacology, so I like doing this to medication and see if there's any interaction. If it's indicated, yeah. If it's not your question, hydrochlorothiazide and lensinopril. Guess what? What is the major side of hydrochlorothiazide? It decreases your potassium, right? It's a diuretic. Lensinopril increases your potassium. Nothing wrong with that. Of course, hydrochlorothiazide has their own side effect. We call it, I call it hypergluc. This is specific for that, but it also causes hypokalemia. And therefore, it's just interacting. They both going the other way. If one increases, one and put it down. This is why we have a combination of blood pressure medication with aeroportazide and then yeah, lensinopril together, right? Clozapin and figrastin. Think about it. Side effect of clozapin, a granulo cytosis, right? When somebody have what, neutropenia, what do you give them? Figrastin to increase what? Their neutrophil level. Therefore, if this is causing a granulocytosis, I'm increasing your neutrophil level. So I'm balancing it up. This is what we give for chemotherapy patients to improve their neutrophil level. Excellent thing. So I don't need to question. Ferrosimide and digoxin. Think about it. Ferrosimide. Another diuretic, side effect, hypokalemia. What is the thing you should avoid in digoxin? Hypokalemia. Therefore, this is a deadly combination. Corticosteroid, what is the side effect? 
ulceration, gastric ulceration. If I give you omeprazole, I'm saving you. PPI, excellent. So I don't need to question this. So the one I need to question is number three. Next question. Number three, of course, my favorite, B-sharp moment. Who do you see first? Who do you want to see first? B-sharp. Breathing problem, electrolyte problem, shock sepsis, hypothermia, airway, lethargy, and pain. That will lose your life, limb, eyesight. What do we have? You may not see it directly there, but you got to apply it. You have to be sharp. Think about the statement and say, mm, this does not make sense. You're being sharp. Peripheral artery disease, right? And the leg in dependent position. PAD, leg in dependent position. The more the leg is looking down, the more blood is flowing. Therefore, this is a good thing. I don't need to see you, right? PAD, leg in the dependent position. If you elevate the leg, blood flow decrease and you get into trouble. Right, client with appendicitis, IDs with the white count 25,000. It's an IDs, I expect an infection. I don't even care about 1 million white count. It's just a trap. Don't worry about it. Client with glycoma prescribes scopolamine for vitigo. Think about it. Glycoma, scopolamine. What should you avoid in glycoma patient? Anticoagulate, anti anticholinergic. Scopolamine is an anticholinergic effect. It has an anticholinergic effect. If you give it to them, they have dilation of their pupil and you have acute angioglycoma crisis. We got to see you. Left rib fracture, complaint of pain with inspiration. You have a broken bone. If you take a deep breath, your, your, your bones will move. You're going to have pain. Don't worry about it. See him later. Of course, you say, oh, he's going to get pneumonia. But yeah, it's an expected finding. Broken bone, yeah, I'll give you pain medication. But this guy is going to lose their eye. And that is pain. Now you're going to lose your eye, limb, and eyesight. Classic B-sharp moment is right there in the P. Number four. I think this is my this second favorite question in the setup. Who do you see, or what is the question? Start from the back, select or apply. Which of the following the next you include in the plan of care? That's my strategy of answering question, from the back. So which one should we include? Read the statement. This can be a full case, but I'm making it a very short form. A client with severe alcoholic abuse, right? Present to the emergency room, I'm underlying the buzzword. To the ED with what? Lethargy, buzzword and oriented to person only, AO1 times one, bad. Examination reveal scar yellow, flapping, tremor with outstretched arm, two, and distended abdomen. What do you think? Break it down. They give you this information, sits back, put them together, figure out what is going on. And think, don't just go and answer the question. Just relax. You got this. You got this. You sit down and said, Lataji, what is going on? And oriented AO times what? One. This is confusion. And if I drink alcohol, I'm alcoholic and I'm yellow and I have what? Flapping tremor with my ostrich hand, asteresis. Eh? What do you think? And I've Distended abdomen. So I have ascites, I have asteresis, joint this, and I'm confused. What do I have? Encephalopathy, hepatic encephalopathy. So I have acute hepatic encephalopathy. Right? What would you do with this patient? He's confused, he's lethargic. If you lethargic and confuse, sick neurologically, you are not functioning. MPO. You have to be in a place we will watch you every hour. I see you. We got to check why you are lethargic and disoriented. It's because your liver is sick. 
and it cannot metabolize what? Ammonia. Therefore, if ammonia is the problem, we have to give you something to take care of the ammonia. What we give you? Lactulose. How do you give it? You titrate it to two to three bar movement. Lactulose is very toxic. It gives you a lot of diarrhea and it, it will make you dehydrated. That's why you titrate it to two to three bar movement. What does it cause? Hypokalemia and hyponatremia. They are all deadly part of the B-sharp electrolyte issue. So monitor this. And how would I know that lactulose is working? Therapeutic effect of lactulose achieved if no flapping trim. If you know moving your hands, it's outstretching, like you flapping, that means we good. So that's good. So this is good. I monitor this. Lactulose is titrated to that. I check your ammonia, admin it to your ICU, and I make you MPO. Straightforward, you don't have to struggle to answer this question if you get the content. If you need help, check Adapt and Class. I promise you, you, you will love it. Free of charge, you don't have to pay for anything. But this is the way, if you know the content, this answers just pop at you like a candy. You know, I call it popcorn, it's just popping. Oh, this makes sense. And like the way I'm breaking down, you can see that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Number five. These questions are sometimes annoying, but you got to deal with them. Conflict resolution. Which of the following is the best strategy? My strategy to answering questions like this, language problem and psych, is look at the word and break it down and see if it makes sense. And this is teaching new graduates, right? on conflict resolution strategies, which of them is the best one. You have to understand this sex conflict resolution. Then you figure out which one is best. Number one is avoiding. There's A and B. They're fighting. A basically, B basically just try to avoid and does not want to even have to do anything with A at all. When you see A, move away from it. That is avoiding. Conflict resolution is not the best way. This problem is still exist, right? Smoothing, A and B have a problem, right? Another C come in and just like smooth the things out or pumping one body physically or like you, you, you the, the charge nurse give you an assignment, example. And you say, oh, the assignment is so hard. I can do it. What would the charge needs to say? Oh, you, you, you are the best nurse I've ever known. I know you can do it. That's why I give it to you. I trust you. you. You are the best I have. And this is why I give it to you. It's like smoothing thing. It's pumping you. It's just flattering you to take the job. So, but you still hold that grudge. The same thing. Competing. Where you get the word competing or forcing. You can see one person A has to win. And B has to lose. So there's a win and a loss situation. A will win and B basically we said give it, but he's going to lose. He did not give out willingly. That's the difference. And A is forcing his idea on him, but B says, look, I give out, whatever, you take it. But he know he has lost. He did not give out willingly. He's competing with each other. Accommodating basically win loss, right? A, win, because B said, it's okay, you take it, take everything. I'm fine with it. I'm fine. I mean, I'll just accommodate your situation. I'll deal with you. I don't want to avoid you. I don't want to compete with you. I don't want the charge name to smoothen everything, but I will deal with you. You can sit beside me. I hate you. I'm accommodating you. Compromising, basically, we both win-win, right? I win, you win, we all come to a compromise and somebody win and somebody lose. At the same time, we are compromising, we're sharing. Collaborating, everybody is winning, there's no lo loss. Compromising means you win and loss, lose at the same time. You get half of what you, 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 you were looking for. The other person to get half of what they were looking for. And then you lose half of your problems. So which one do you think? Is collaborating. We all win. Nobody lose. So this is the best way. And they give you a scenario. 
just write it down and see. I can explain it to you and you can figure out which. They will give you a scenario and you have to figure out. But this one, I just want to explain the content the way it is. Okay. Sometimes they will give you to you and select which one is good the same way. Sometimes they will give it to you and explain which one is the best. They will describe it and you pick one. This is also my favorite, right? Very good question. Listen carefully. The next note that this is adverse effect of what? Adverse effects on medication. A client with back pain, keyword back pain, was prescribed a medication. We don't know what it is. Client called the clinic due to what? Pay attention, dry mouth, dilated pupil, urinary retention, green discoloration of the skin, abnormal heart beats and drowsiness. A bunch of information I want you to think. Dry mouth, see if we can recognize some pattern. Just write it down, dilated, people connect connect things together and urinary retention do you see anything here anything common here pause the video and think about it do you see anything here? dry mouth where have you heard about it dilated people urinary retention i don't want to give you everything right constipation right Dry mouth, I already give in to you, right? What do you think? Anti cholinergic effect. And then dilated people, yeah, anti cholinergic, right? This is specific for discoloration, the medication that is also do that, but it also affects your heart and your brain, drowsiness. What do you think? So I have something that is as anti-colonergic effect. He has neuro effect. He has what? Cardiac effect. Eh? And he has skin effect, dermatitis. And I will put E here. Evaluate all of them. What have I done? What does it say? D-A-N-C-E. D-A-N-C-E. That's dance. In my pharmacology lectures, you see, I always say T-C-A dance. Check adapting class, you will see that. T-C-A dance. When you're on T-C-A, you got to do the dance, right? You develop dermatitis, anticholinergic effect, neurological effect, and cardiac arrhythmia. And I want you to E, the E doesn't have anything. Evaluate all this to make sure the patient does not have the symptoms. TCA dance, my best. Uh, uh, I like that medication, but it's very poisonous and very painful. It causes a lot of problem and you have to know it. They like these questions because see, this drug, it causes a lot of problem, okay? The one that you, test taking skills, I will show you something, morphine, it's not TCA, right? But if you know, look at morphine and fentanyl. They are all opiate. How can they cause the same thing? How can they be different thing? They all will cause the same thing. So two opiate cannot be what's causing the problem, right? That's the thing. At the same time, opiate, what does it cause? Your eyes will be constricted. It's not dilated. So that's why these opiates are out. Motrin has no anticholinergic. It does not affect your pupil at all. And you know that naloxin is what you use for the effect of uh, morphine. So even if you don't know, test the key skills. I intentionally test this, uh, made this question. Look at it. You left with only D. Test the key skills and be able to eliminate one, two, three, and four. And left with the amoxapine. You may not have seen this before, but this is TCA. Another medication is amitriptylin or no triptylin. Those are the common ones that we all know, but amoxapine is a form of TCA. This can be given as a antidepressant. So it's also an anti 
depressant. So you have to know that. So this is an antidepressant, which is a TCA. Okay, and mitriptyline and nortriptyline is what we all know. So nortriptyline or amitriptyline, that's all we are. But this is another medication. It's a TCA. So this is a TCA side effect. Okay, select or apply, right? Which of the following need immediate intervention? I need to intervene. 50 year old was, the 50 year old client um, with CHF was prescribed the joxin. Prescribed the joxin and CHF. Which of the following the next need immediate intervention? You have to teach them about the joxin. What do you think? Right? What are the things you tell them about the joxin? Potassium? I will increase my potassium. No. When it comes to electrolyte, you want to keep it then what? Normal. Don't there's three electrolytes. We say low potassium will make you worse. High potassium, uh, sodium, it. Calcium will make it worse. Low magnesium will make it worse. But the same way, you don't pick that as an answer. You say teaching, keep all this normal. I don't want you to increase your uh, calcium, keep it normal. I don't want you to decrease your potassium, keep it normal. I don't want you to decrease your magnesium, keep them normal. Therefore, I will increase my potassium. No, even though he said, do not lower your potassium, don't go up on it. It will make it worse. So you take it up. The same thing, even though they said, don't increase your calcium, what he means is keep it normal. I will hold if apical pulses, 70, no this number, 60. 70, 90. If it's less than 90 for neonates, for a child, and an adult. So adult is 60, right? So need immediate intervention, da, da. Hold if apical pause, is that? Yes. So this, we need immediate intervention, immediate intervention, immediate intervention. Local rice will increase toxicity. What does local rice do? It decrease your potassium. And we said it, low potassium will increase toxicity. Therefore, we don't need immediate intervention for that. So one is wrong, we need an intervention. Two, we need intervention. And three, um, we need intervention. So one, two, three. Number eight. So a bunch of eye questions to help you. If you've never seen one before, select and apply. Which of the following need immediate intervention by the child nurse? The five-year-old is seen at the pit clinic and the nurse received an order for visual acuity, visual acuity. So how sharp is your eyes, right? Which of the following need immediate intervention? To text for visual acuity, yeah, we use, um, uh, Snell and charge test, right? And you have to know how it's done. Okay, it's a young kid, six years, six years and below, right? We do pediatric, uh, American Association of Pediatric want them to be tested at 10 feet. In adult, we use 20 feet. But in kids, we use 10 feet. So use the Snell chart at 10 feet. 10 feet is the same thing as three feet. Three, three meters, so that's over here. Keep both eyes open, right? But one covered. So if this is two eyes, right? You keep them open, but you, you let them cover one with the eye. Because if you close one, everything is looking one, so you'll be cheating. Um, so one eye is open, but you put your hand on that. You cover it while, while it's open. It doesn't see, but there's still stimulus going through that. So keep both eyes open, but one covered, okay? You keep open and keep one covered, even though it's covered, it's still open. 
keep glasses on if applicable. If you want to do the test in the best corrected eye as much as possible. If the patient wear glasses, let them wear it. Don't take it out. If they wear glasses, they are, if they are allowed to keep the glasses for the test. Keep one eyes closed, okay? One eyes should not be closed. It's open but covered, right? So examine both eyes simultaneously last. After you finished, then you examine both eyes. So go back and see what I did. Which of the following need immediate intervention? Which one need immediate intervention? It's this one alone. So even though I put a check mark there, I mean, this is correct. You don't need to do intervention. The only thing that is wrong is this, but my answer choice is that. You can do it the other way around. Sometimes it's very confusing. I like it this way. I check, check that, this is check, this is right. And the wrong one, I cancel it. And then I go back to the answer choice. It's asking me which one need intervention. So I'm looking for the wrong answer. So this is the wrong answer. You can do it the other way around. You cancel the right answer and you leave the wrong answer alone. You, whichever way works for you. So this, sometimes I go back and forth. The, depending on how I start. But this one, I keep one eye closed. Yeah, it's open but covered. So you do, you, you open one eye, one is closed, and you do one side, then you do the other side, then you open both eyes and do it. So you do three tests. So the one that needs intervention is only one. So if you choose one more than one, you get, you get zero. Select or apply in the next generation. You pick those that you're confident. If you're not confident, just leave it alone. But this is only one answer choice in that question, just to show you some content. Okay? Need immediate intervention. Now, after you do the test, you have to know if the kid passed or not. Which of the following need a referral to ophthalmology? Five-year-old who wear glasses, okay, is seen in the PED clinic and the nurse receive an order for visual acuity. After you do the test, you know the Snelling test, there's a chart and there's nomes here, A, B, C, D, nomes, like A, B, C, and there's a line here, like that. And people stand in front and they read the line. You read letters on the line. And then they've graded 20 over 40, 30 over 40, like that. You find a chart and then look at it as your reference and you see what you look. So to pass at a certain level, you have to read four out of six letters to go to the next level, okay? So that's, you start from the lowest until you can read. So that's what they look for. If you're not reading more than four, you fail. So what is the one that requires ophthalmology? Yeah, you need at least four. So five out of six letters on each row is fine. Four is fine. Three is no good. Six out of six is best. So three out of six in each row, you go to the ophthalmologist to figure out what is going on with your eyes. Now, I want to show you, so this is a bunch of eye questions. Which documentation, you don't see it in YouTube, so I want to see if I can teach you guys about this. Which documentation from the nurse is accurate? Select or apply, right? A 20-year-old client's slanted test results show uh, OD, okay? OD, 2020, OS, 2030, OU, 25. This is just Latin word. OD, okay, this is Dexter. It's a Latin word for Dexter. And the OS is sinister. And the uh, OU is Utica or Uticule. These are all Latin word. Latin word for Dexter is right. Sinister is left. And this is both eyes. Okay, so we look at it and said OD is 2020. 2020 means if you stand at 20 feet, the objects you see, the normal people in the population will see also at 20 feet. 
So OD right eye, right? Which documentation from the nurse is correct? Is she said OD is the right eye, right? This is correct. OS is the left eye. This is correct. Right eye is better than both eyes. What is right eye? Right eye is 2020. So the person we see at 20 feet, the same as the population we see at 20 feet. In OU, which is both, person will see an object at 20 feet, but the population will see it at 25 feet. That means the population will have to go back and see it. That means they can see the object even when they are far. So this is what it means. If this, I have an object here, this patient will have to stand 20 feet here to be able to see it. If you are a normal population, you stand all the way here, but you can still see. It. That means your vision is better than this guy. So right eye is better than both eyes. It's good because right eye is 2020 20, and this is 24. Client need glasses. No. It's 2020 20 on one eye and 2030 20, on both eye and 2020 20, and 2030 20, on both, 2025 20, on both eye and 2030. 20, that means this is a normal vision, basically, close to normal vision. There's no need glasses to be able to see. So one, two, three. This one is not right. So I'll give you an example so that you can practice. Which reading corresponds to the results? At 20 feet from the Snelling chart, a client sees what a person with a good vision sees. So this person see at 20 feet this object, right? A normal person with a good vision can see this object even if they are far away, okay? See this object if they stand at 100 feet. So how will you interpret it? His vision is bad. Because the normal people, if you take anybody in the population, can see that object far away, even if they are 100 feet from each other. But you, you have to go closer to the object to, to see it. Therefore, you always write the, the, the first letter first, the, the individual, the client first. So 20 client and the general population is what, 100. So this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong, this. So this is the individual, and this is general population. General population highs are better to normal form. Same thing, trying to get you comfortable with this. Which documentation from the nest is accurate, right? Select that apply. A 20-year-old client received 20, 40 results from this learning chart. So what do you think? 20, 40. And I explain it to you. This is the person and this is the population. So pop and client. That means client can see an object at 20 feet, but the population will go, we even can go back all the way 40 feet and see the object. That means client eye is bad compared to the population. So what did I say? Read at 20 feet. So that's the client read at 20 feet. Normal vision read at 40s. This is good. Client cannot read at 40. Yes. But normal vision read at 20. No, normal vision read at 40. So this is right, but this is it. Read at 40. That means the client read at 40, which is wrong. This is client normal. So that's wrong already. Cannot read at 20. They read at 20. So that's wrong. So this is the only answer. It's confusing, but I intentionally said it that way. Sit back, pause the video, and try and do it on your own. You see, you figure that. If you get used to it, it becomes easy. So this is to help you more, right? 20-year-old client received results from the Stanley test. The next documented blindness. Now we blind. Which reading corresponds to that? So I told you, uh, client over what? Population. The larger the client number, the better their vision. Okay? The larger the population number compared to the client, the poor is their vision. So it's opposite. 
So if the client is blind, that means they seen something at 20, right? And the population is seeing that 200. The population normal is too high. Population can stand here and see the object all the way here. Client has to stand here like that. This is blinded. You stand here to see the object. Population stand all the way here. So if the the population the lower normal is very higher than the client, that means it's bad vision. So this is 2020. Client see at 20, population see at 20. Client see at 20, population see at 60. Okay, it's getting bad. Client see at 20, population go all the way back. It's, this is West Vision. This is not bad. It's also it's better than the um, 200. So this 20, 200 is legal blindness. So that's number three. So number 14, what kind of place do we have? Straightforward question. Which play is paired with appropriate age group? Parallel play, this is what you do. One play here, one play here. They don't interact, but they okay you being around with them. But they don't interact with you, right? That's parallel play. The people who does that is 12 to three months. So this is the one that do that. Solitary play, I play alone. I don't want you to come and bother me. My parents are okay. That's kids less than 12 months. Associate play, you play together, but there's no leader. Nobody is in charge. So this is good. Corporate play, we play together, but we have a leader who take command, is in charge of everything, and is that, so this is good. So, which play is paired with appropriate description? Parallel play, play alone, yes. Solitary play, play independently, right? No. Parallel play, play alone? No, they they, they, they they play alone, but they don't play, um, they play near each other. So let me explain again. Parallel play, one play here, another play here, but it's near each other, but they don't interact. So this one, go here, play independently near each other. Solitary play, play alone. They don't want you to come near them. So solitary play, play alone, parallel play, play independently. This is a better description near each other. So this both are wrong. Associate play, like you said, play together, no leadership. Corporate play, play together with the true leader. So this is what it is. Okay. Number 16, we almost done. Select or apply. Which of the following indicate withdrawal, right? A client on morphine for chronic back pain. What do you think? Withdrawal. You go like that. You say morphine. Okay. What is that? It's an opiate. You have to know the side effect of this. It causes what? Is a downer. So everything should be going down, right? When you intoxicate. When you intoxicate, that means you're taking too much downer things go down. When you withdraw, that means you don't have it. This is the way you do it. Therefore, things should be going what? Up. Then you look at your answer choice. Constipation, is it going up? No. Urine retention, is it going up? No. Dilated people, is big, going up. Bradycardia, is it going up? No. Sweating, things are going up. And then you're done. Three, other, three and five. That's the way we are, oh, it, substance abuse is the way you're supposed to do that. Otherwise, you make it so complicated, symptoms, no, up and down and see which direction the thing is going. You don't have to memorize specific symptoms. 
And trust me, that's the best way to attack it because you will never for remember all the signs and symptoms. But I know it's a downer upper. I look at this the question, the answer choice, and say constipation. What happened to constipation? Things go down. Dilated people, things get bigger. So yeah, withdrawal, things get bigger. Okay. 17. These tests include a next perform visual acuity test on an adult client. The same, we come back to the vision. We talk about it, visual acuity, that's the slanting test, right? How do the next do it? Follow examiner's fingers in H from form with both eyes. When you're doing this H, moving your hand left, right, what are you doing is different. Mm -hmm. This is the vis visual field. Don't confuse the rest. Visual field is not the same as acuity. Acuity is how, how sharp you can see an object. Field is uh, your 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 circumferential view of an object, whether you can look at on the side of your eye and you see something is coming. And that is the visual field. Okay, so don't confuse the rest. So the acting you acuity. So anything that show a field, you cancel it. So this is wrong. Look at an examiner's finger as it moves laterally. The same thing. You're looking for the field of view. Look straight ahead with light shining on both high field of view. When you stand 20 feet from the snelling chart, you're looking for sharpness of your vision. And that is a visual acuity. So this is right. Okay, next question. A client with acute coronary syndrome was found to be in heart failure. Which of the following is consistent with the left-sided heart failure? You know this, straightforward. Look at the heart. And he said, left-sided heart failure is all pulmonary symptoms and kidney. That's all. Or hypoperfusion problem. Right? Pulmonary symptoms. Leg edema, does it tell you pulmonary symptoms? No. Ascites, pulmonary symptoms, no. JVD, it's not a pulmonary problem. Low urine output, I see kidney, I'm picking it. Crackles, it's a pulmonary symptoms. CVP, central venous pressure, it's a, not the pulmonary symptoms. Just make things easy. Pulmonary symptoms, I'm looking for it. All those are right-sided. The systemic, systemic is right. So CVP, JVD, ascites, leg edema. The rest is so four and five uh, pulmonary symptoms and kidney function. Okay. Select or apply. Which of the following is consistent with venous disease of the leg? A client with pulmonary embolism due to varicose vein asked the nurse about venous disease. So which one is consistent? The venous is problem, what do you think? It's a reflux problem. So blood is just going down. It stay in the leg rather than going up. So there's more blood. They have more blood they need it, peripheral venous disease. So if they have more blood, the blood leak to the skin and the pigment in the blood change the skin to pigmented. If blood leak, it causes edema. Their feet is not going to be cold because there's too much blood there. They have ulcers is located above the ankle and it's medially in the middle portion of it. Because there's a lot of air going, to, a lot of blood going to the skin, you should have air on your skin. It's no airless, so this is wrong. Oral contraception is a risk factor. Yeah, if you take birth control, you develop DVT and it can destroy your vein. Pregnancy, a major risk factor? Yeah, it's related to this. You develop DVT in pregnancy or venous conjection from the baby pushing on the inferior vena cava and that causes edema. Keep the leg in the dependent position. There's blood going down too much. We want to elevate the leg to turn the blood back. So this is wrong. So one, two, four, six, and seven are the right answer. Okay, 
which of the fall, which of the hallucination below require further investigation from the nurse? There's only one hallucination that require information that you need to investigate is auditory. So what does we see? I see my friend crawling on the wall at night. You see, it's a sight, it's a visual hallucination. So it's no problem. A bag, a bag, uh, I say I can say a bag on my skin is annoying. Or you can say the bag on my skin is annoying. Yeah. It's a touch, it's in the skin, you can feel it, right? That's not bad. I smell cockroaches all over the bed. Yeah, that smell, nose. The voices keep on whispering in my ear. You can hear something. That is auditory, so we got to intervene here. I try to make it funny, but so number four is the right answer. This teaching is appropriate. You have to know certain things about cane, how to use it, right? Which teaching is appropriate? Go up to the, to the stairs with the right leg, okay? Right leg. Right leg is what? It's the affected leg. You don't go up with the affected leg. You go up with the good leg. The good leg is the left leg. Go down the stairs with the left leg. You go down the stairs with the bad leg. The bad leg is the right leg. Hold cane on the left side. You hold cane on what? On the good side. The good side is the left side. And so this is good. Hold cane on the right side. The right side is bad. You can't hold it there. So three is the right answer. You have to be familiar with those things. Number 22, pharmacology. Select or apply. A client with history of gut was seen in the clinic for routine visit. Which teaching is appropriate? Continue to take allopurinol to prevent acute attack. Yeah, it's for maintenance, so that's good. Don't take allopurinol during acute attack. Yes, that will precipitate the problem. It will break down the uric acid and you get more attack, so that's good. You have to take cochicine. Avoid aged cheese and wine. Yeah, these have high uh, purine. Uh, content. Join a gym program so that you can lose weight. This is good. Avoid alcohol, also high in purine, and drink two to three liters of water a day, um, if not contraindicated. If you can drink two to three liters, liters of water a day and it's not a problem, that's good to prevent um, issue. So that's good. Number 23, this is what? A client with schizophrenia said to the nurse, I went to the store last night. What is the name of the school behind this hospital? Tomorrow is my birthday. You see what I'm doing? Trying to help you remember these things. It's hard, but you gotta remember them. Look at it, he went to the store last night. Okay, did he finish the sentence? No. What is the name of the school? Uh, behind the hospital, another topic. Then he said, tomorrow is my birthday, another topic. Word salad means you put words together, just word. Peter, Paul, Peter, eat chicken, white, you know, that's, that's word salad. Concrete thinking, basically you can do abstract thinking. He said, the, the, the grass is greener on the other side. So you look at the other side, he's suspecting a green uh, 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 grass on it. Yeah, that's not what we need. The sky is ever blue or the kite, I never stay in the sky before. That means every kite has to, basically literary interpretation, they can do that. Neologism, what is that? Neologism, it means they make up words, okay? They can put where like maybe fork and spoon, let's see. What can we say? You can say spoof, spoof. You can pull like spork or something, spoof. You know, they put words together and they say words that that's like you never heard it before. Basically, making up words. This is tangential. It's like moving from one topic to another without even a pause. You never finished one sentence.
24. Setup. Select and apply. A client with diagnosis of anorexia, which of the following is expected? They being eat? No. They don't even want to eat. They are afraid of eating. They just stay away from food. They are picky eaters. Bulimia is a big eaters. Yeah, the menses usually doesn't come. BMI of 25, this is normal BMI. They're usually like 18 and below. So this is one. The nungo of the back. Yeah, this is primitive air growth. And it's because they're more nourished. They develop primitive air growth to cool them down. Uh, no, to warm them up because their metabolic rate is low. They need something to warm them up. Their temperature is very cold. And so they need something to warm them up. They develop this lunungo, usually fine in kids, in primitive individuals. And so this is to warm them up here. Perk behavior, yeah. They purge, they don't bang, but the little they eat, they want to purge it up. Fear of weight gain, excellent. So the only two is one and three. And the last one, select or apply. A client was admitted with acute mania. Which of the following the nature should include in the plan of care? If somebody have mania that's bipolar, they keep on going, you can't stop them. So the best thing you can do for them is slow them down. Give them timing. So set a limit. Okay. Every psychotic patient get their physical needs provided first. And when you're providing food for these people, they can sit down. Don't give me, them a food that they will sit down. Give them a food that they can, they will use it as a finger food, like a party food. You're standing and eating, you know, I'm I'm bigger, you know, burritos, uh, milkshake in a bottle, and canola bar and all those things. Rice, beans, and fish. There's no too much protein. There's protein here, but they may have to sit down and eat this. No. Group therapy, no. Individual therapy first, and then you would, and before they go on group therapy. So one and two is the right answer. So this is just briefly some 25 questions to get you going. Um, I hope you learned something new as always. Thank you for staying to the end, and all the best of luck. Good luck. Keep charging. Bye-bye.